Hello everyone, this is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. And today I'm talking with Ben Gran. Ben is a full-time freelance writer. He has been working full-time as a writer for the last three years, working with clients all around the world. Uh, welcome, Ben. Hello, Margaret. Thanks for having me. Hi there. It's great to have you here. Um, I've got a question that I wanted to ask you uh, that I mean, it's on the mind of a lot of women in our 60 and Me community. And that is how they leave a legacy, how they can write their memoir or their autobiography um, in a way that they could share it with their family and um, you know, just kind of re relive their life and, and, and make a note of it. So can you help us to understand how we would get started writing our, our memoir? Definitely. I, I feel like uh, writing memoirs is something that, that everyone should do. You know, I, I think that's it's such a beautiful way to uh, to share your memories with your family and, and really kind of leave a legacy. Like you said, um, I, I would love it if I had memoirs of, of my grandparents, you know, yeah. who, who've already passed on. Yes. Um, it, it, it's something that can be of a great comfort to your family to show them who you were, who you are, who they are. You know, it's, it's part of the way that we transmit our sense of identity yes, as a family. Sure. And uh, so it, 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 I remember there a few years ago, uh, there was an article, there, there's, a, there's a writer named Anna Quindlin. Yes. In the U.S. Yes. Are you I familiar know. with her? Yes, I yeah. am. I do know oh, her sure. books. Yeah. And uh, she she used to write for Newsweek, uh, and she wrote a really great column a few years ago called "Write for Your Life," and she talked about the, how important it is to to create those those memories in in writing to share mm -hmm. with your family, whether it's a whether it's a letter to your kids on their wedding days or, you know, some, whether it's some kind of significant moment in your life or a longer form like memoir, it's just so important to do that. And uh, I, I'll see if I can find that link and, and we can share yeah. that with your community that on the website. That would be great. I think what you're saying, actually, which is really important, is to, to actually make it a lifelong process and to keep a journal, even if it's just, you know, one sentence a day or just to pay attention to the life that you're living in the present. Uh, so that, you know, when you've got moments to sit down and put it all together, you know, you can do that. So, um, so assuming that I've done this all my life and I've got lots of great notes and pictures, which we all probably have pictures, um, where do we start when we're writing a book? What, what are the steps? What, what, what's the plan? I think one of the ways to, to approach it is think about whose memoirs have you read that, that really affected you and, okay. and that you would like to emulate. Because th there are different types of memoirs. There, there are like the more comprehensive ones that are kind of like chronological, like from the start, uh, you know, they cover a very long span of someone's life. Uh, there are more like kind of situational memoirs, I guess, for lack of a better word, where someone like relates the story of how they got through a particular experience in their life right. uh, uh, or overcame a certain challenge in their life. And so g give some thought to, you know, maybe, maybe read a few memoirs of, of people you admire and, and, and see which books really resonate with you. And then just, uh, you know, uh, imitation is the sincere, uh, sincerest form of flattery. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, you know, maybe you can just say, Oh, well, I really like this person's memoir and I want to do mine in a similar style. Okay. So maybe start there, find one that you like, find one that you want to emulate. I think that's a great idea. And the important thing is that no one really is going to read it except for yourself and your family. It's not, well, unless you want to publish it, which we can talk about later, but you don't have to really worry too much about whether the sentence structure is perfect. It's kind of, you know, start with the chapter headings maybe. And as you say, if you want to do, I was born in <laughs> and then right yeah. the way through, or, you know, I dealt with the situation that I want the family to understand. So but um, t tell us about, um, if, I mean, most women aren't authors by, you know, my profession and they, they're not great, you know, writers, but they, they can tell stories. Um, what's, what's the best way to, to tell the story of your life if you decide to go the chapter route? And um, how do you get those memories back? How do you, how do you tell those stories? I think it kind of... Um... I suppose every every person has different triggers, right? That they might bring back certain memories. I think it's important to try and um, try and get back into that that mindset that you were in at each stage of your life, like to whatever extent possible. Try and remember how it felt to be a high school student, or what how it felt when you were out uh, out of out in the world for the first time, having a job, or what was it like to be married in, in the early years of marriage, or what, whatever stage of life you're talking about. Try and uh, 
try and find something that like puts you back in that moment. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not 60 yet. I'm only uh, 34 at this point, but I still, I still remember how it felt on, on the last day of high school. And I still, I don't think back on it all the time, but I just, I, I remember just like what a rush it was to be done with high school. And I was so grateful and my friends and I were all just jubilant, you know, and, and one of my friends had snuck a cigar into class and he was like <laughs> chomping on the cigar while we were walking out the door. And we were just yeah. so glad to yeah. be done with school. Those kinds of things, like yeah. try and find ways to, and, and, and maybe a, maybe a way to do it is to, to, to call some of your friends or, or relatives uh-huh. who, yeah. who remember these times in your life. And and ask them like, what do you remember about that time we did this, or what do you remember about uh, what do you remember about our grandfather who 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 died years ago? You know, try and 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 do some research just by drawing upon your own inner circle to to help you clarify some of your own memories. Well, they're all on Facebook anyway, so you can always <laughs> ask them on Facebook. But the other thing, I, I, I when I was doing this, is, is, is pictures. I mean, that for me was like a huge, um, like my Christmas letters that I wrote, you know, which summarized the year and brought back the memories of exactly what happened. And, and as you said, sometimes it's one thing, like the cigar, that, um, that crystallizes the whole experience of that year or of that time in your life. And um, I think that's kind of, that's the fun part about it. But also, also, what if, so let's go back to, to publishing, because what if you do want to publish your book and you, you know, you've got a really good story. I mean, some people have lived amazing lives and uh, six decades of life. Um, how would we do that? There are a lot of tools for self-publishing uh, online right. where you can, you can use uh, websites such as uh, Amazon.com has a website called Create Space okay. where people can uh, basically upload a manuscript of their book uh, and get it printed and have it published for Amazon Kindle. You can have it published online as an ebook as well. Wow. And you can, you can sell your book online to anyone who, who might be interested. Is there a charge uh, for that? Is it, does it cost money to do that? It does. I'm not familiar with the fee structure right off the top of my head, but they, but there's uh, some cost. yeah, there, but still, yeah, there's some great. cost, but yeah. it's great. And, yeah. and the nice thing is, um, uh, even though it does cost money to use services like CreateSpace, the the fees are a lot more kind of flexible and scalable depending on how many copies of your book you want to print, uh, depending on uh, you know how much advertising you want to do to promote your book. So it, it it can be pretty cheap. I mean, if if you just maybe you just want to print like fifty copies of your book to give to family members, you know, you you can do that more cheaply than ever before. You don't you don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to to run a printing press uh, and and print thousands of copies. You can just kind of, you can do it on a small scale. How cool is that though, to have it as a Kindle? I mean, if you could just, you know, if you can write your, your story and then have it published so that people can download it to their uh, Kindle or their um, iPad. And that's a really, and you can of course add pictures to your book and that's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's great. You can do as much or as little as you want with it really. You know, you yeah. can kind of create your own ebook and, uh, and actually, uh, not necessarily in the memoir space, but there are a lot of there are a lot of authors now who are making a full time income as authors, as book authors, without ever having had a traditional publishing deal. You know, they they're they're selling their books on Amazon for like a dollar ninety nine a download. Yeah. And you know, not everyone does this, but there are people who have, have developed a following and, and make a good living now just writing, writing eBooks. So it's, it's an interesting time. It, it, it's more possible. It's more possible than ever before for everyday people who want to write a book. You know, you don't have to live in New York. You don't have to have a literary agent, but you can put your ideas out there and uh, you know, and publish your book the way you want to. And whether it's just for your family or whether it's something that you want to try to create a following online and, and find an audience and make some money, you can do that too. You know, this is a really, really cool conversation because I think a lot of women, you know, from in the community are actually, they come, they, they talk to us online about the, the things they've been through in their lives, the, the challenges that they've faced. And I think a lot of times when you're in your sixties, you just sometimes feel like, um, you know, you're, you're never going to get a chance to share that wisdom, you know, with your, with the, with the younger generations in your family. And I think that's one of the sad things about our, our age is that we're not given as many outlets for, um, you know, for talking about our wisdom and um, the, 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 the things we've learned over time. So I think publishing or, or writing your own book is just a really cool way of, of uh, saying who you are, what you did and, you know, passing it on. 
But what if you don't want to write it yourself? What if you have tons of great ideas, but you you either don't want to write it or you don't have the time? What, what kind of options have we got there? <laughs> well, in that case, you could hire someone like me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no plug uh, intended. <laughs> shameless plug. But um, no, um, there, there are ghost writers yeah. out there who, who, who can help people write a book. Right. Uh, and, and it doesn't, you know, a lot of times a ghostwriter, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to completely surrender your entire story uh, and turn it all over into the hands of this other person. But maybe you could have, you could hire a ghostwriter to, to, to work with you and help edit your materials as you go or help, help you narrow the focus of your story as you go. Um, it, there are a lot of ways that a ghostwriter can help. A ghostwriter can help create a structure for your book, it, uh, work with you on the phone or via Skype. Uh, to talk through the chapter headings that you want to cover. Uh, uh, th- th- there are a lot of different ways you, you can get help to get the book done. If you've got the stories in mind and, you know, and if you, if you're prepared to spend a bit of money to get it done, uh, if, if you're at a point in life where you have, where you have more time, uh, where you have more money than time, um, you know, and, and it, you'd rather, if it's important to you to get this story out there, then there are a lot of ways that you can hire someone who's a professional writer to, to help you, help you get that done. Yeah. I think actually a lot of um, you know professional writers, politicians, people who are you know working in the middle of a book they're writing actually use a ghostwriter. So I don't think that's an unusual um, way of writing a book. But um, yeah, it's, it's it's true. I actually have a friend who's a ghostwriter, and she she does like really high end uh, yeah. ghostwriting contracts. And yeah, she basically said like any book written by a celebrity or a musician <laughs> or an athlete or a politician, like none of those people actually wrote the book. Yes, you know? yes. It's always a ghostwriter. Um, and I just want to mention too, if if someone if someone's interested in hiring a ghostwriter, you can go to a website called elance dot com. And you can post a project where you can say, you know, I want to write my memoirs. I need help. You can post a, a budget that you're willing to pay and outline the scope of help that you need. And, and people all over the English speaking world uh, who work as ghostwriters in various capacities can bid on your project, introduce themselves to you, and you can have a chance to get connected with someone uh, who might help you write your book. So writing a memoir, you can do it yourself. You can have a ghostwriter write it. Uh, you can keep it you know, in your own family or you can sell it to the world. <laughs> lots and lots of options. Definitely. And I think uh, women over 60 need to, um, you, need to, you need to recognize the power of your own voice. And um, I know one of the things I read on your site, Margaret, you, you talked about how a lot of women over 60 often feel invisible or yes. feel like society considers them to be invisible. Nice. And uh, I think that's, that's a real tragedy that, that we're, we're missing out on a lot of human potential um, because society tends to overlook people once they get to a certain age. Um, and, and, and writing your own memoir can be an incredibly empowering experience and to, to help show the world, you know, this is what I've learned. This is what, this is what I stand for. This is what I've worked for in my life. This is what I'm about. And uh I, w- more women over 60 need to need to seize that power back for themselves. Wow. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself. And I'm so in agreement with you that this invisibility cloak that, um, that you know, the, that society puts around us does, is just a fiction. I mean, we can, we can take it off and be our beautiful, you know, expressive selves. And you're right, make it, my words are, are probably the best way to do it. So I'm inspired. <laughs> have you... Good. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been really great talking to you, Ben, and uh, I really appreciate your insights. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. 